Now, one-to-one -one remoting is good for doing something on a single remote machine, but what you're really going to love is the ability to push a command out to multiple remote computers, have them execute the command on their copy of PowerShell, and bring the results back to you. It's all done with the invoke command commandlet. You'll provide one of two things, either a script block, which is a curly bracket delimited set of commands that you want to run, and that's suitable if, if it's just a, a short command or a single command or something like that. Or you can provide a file path to a script that's located on your computer. The command will actually read the, those commands out of the file and transmit across the network, so the remote machines don't need to have direct access to the actual file. You'll provide one or more computer names using any means possible. Uh, you could use parentheses to read in a list of computer names from a file or to read computer names from Active Directory. Those are the basics and for a simple command that's all you need to do. If you've modified the ports that WinRM is listening to you can specify an alternate port and by default WinRM will only talk to 32 machines simultaneously. Now keep in mind that that does involve spinning up additional PowerShell processes on your machine as well as a PowerShell process on each of the remote machines. So there's sort of some intelligence behind that default limit. If you find that your computer is performing poorly, then you can use the throttle limit parameter to specify a lower number of simultaneous connections. You can still specify as many computers as you want. It's just it will only talk to this many simultaneously. The rest of them will just wait in line. If you want to have this use HTTPS for its communications, specify the use SSL parameter. Keeping in mind that the enable PS remoting commandlet does not automatically enable a firewall exception for SSL traffic, so you'll have to do that on your own. All of those same parameters are supported on both of these different parameter sets. So let's just take a look at a quick example. Get, oops, invoke command, I'm already onto the command. Uh, script block, get service from the computers. Let's see, I'm going to use server r2, which is on my network, as well as localhost. And we'll give that just a moment to run, and there it goes. You'll notice one of the neat things that remoting does is it automatically tacks on an extra property, PS computer name, to every single object that comes back from the remote computers. That way you're able to tell which object came from which computer. In fact, I'm going to sort on PS computer name because there's no guarantee that those objects are going to come back all in one hunk or in the same order as I specified. Uh, so by sorting them, I'll make sure that all my output gets in the right order. And then I'm going to format them in a table, which they're already doing, but I want to explicitly group them by PS computer name. Now, the sort part of this is probably not a great idea if you're bringing back hundreds of thousands of objects because sort has to keep all of them in memory until it gets all of the output and then it can sort them all. So if you were bringing back hundreds of objects each from hundreds of computers, uh, sort would probably not perform really well. But in this case, it's only a couple of computers and only a few dozen objects apiece, so this should be fine. And you can see that what it's done is it's created a different table for each of the two computers I asked for. So it's a really, really handy way of sending a command out to multiple computers, having it execute, nice distributed computing, and then getting all the results back locally.